Today, Hotel de Mille Collines is a tranquil place for tourists in the heart of Rwanda's capital, Kigali. During the 1994 Rwandan genocide, this neighborhood was a killing field. More than 1,200 people fled to this hotel for safety. It was then managed by a 39-year-old Rwandan man named Paul Rusesabagina, who, using cash bribes and gifts of whiskey, kept the killers at bay. The story of how Rissa Begina saved the lives of more than a thousand people made him famous, first in the 2004 Oscar-nominated movie Hotel Rwanda. It's the true story of a man who fought impossible odds. I cannot leave these people to die. <laughs> In 2005, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom and wrote a best-selling memoir. In the late 2000s, he used his celebrity status to found a Rwandan opposition political party. He did so in exile to counter what he saw as Rwanda's turn to dictatorship. That put him in the sights of Rwanda's authoritarian leader, Paul Kagame, who has been in power since the genocide. Rusesa Begina spoke to me in 2018. Why do you think they're targeting you? With the Rwandan government, you are not allowed to be a popular person who is not working for them. Either you are with them, their friend, or you are their enemy. And that's it. You are their enemy because you tell what they don't want to be told. I'm not the only one. There are many others today. International rights groups say opposition politicians, journalists, and activists both in Rwanda and abroad have been killed or made to disappear after criticizing President Paul Kagame. Rusesa Begina believed the long arm of Rwanda's government had followed him to Belgium. He said people broke into his home, trashing it, taking nothing but Rwandan language documents. They came in through this door. You can see how it looks like. You can see how the door gave up. With a constant stream of threats to his life, he said he could never return to his homeland. They wish I would come. As some of my friends told me, if they see me, they will eat me raw. They wouldn't need to cook me. And what's your fear if, if you do that? Well, if I go there, they kill me. In other words, as they have done to many people, many other guys, in 2020, he did go there, though not voluntarily. His problems began when he left on a trip from his second home in San Antonio, Texas, where he is a legal resident. Paul Rusesa Begina flew from Texas to Dubai. There he boarded a private plane that he thought was going to Burundi, where he said he had plans to speak to churches. But the plane actually flew to Rwanda. In an interview with Al Jazeera English, Rwanda's then Justice Minister Johnston Busingye admitted that Rwanda paid for the private plane that took Rusesa Begina, without his knowledge, to Kigali. I'm, I'm asking who, who paid? The government paid. So the government paid for the plane that transported him yesterday. Once in Rwanda, Rusesa Begina was arrested and charged with being behind a series of deadly 2018 rebel attacks. And suddenly, Paul Rusesa Begina was on trial, charged with crimes including terrorism. The time has come for us to use any means possible. In a video published online after our 2018 interview, Paul Rusesa Begina made provocative statements regarding the Rwandan government. However, he denied ever playing any part in any violent action. I spoke to his daughter Anais Kanimba in August of this year in Washington, D.C., before the verdict. She was there lobbying the U.S. government for help in securing his release. No, it's been a nightmare for our family. Kanimba is a genocide survivor herself. In 1994, when she was just a toddler, her biological parents were murdered. Rasasa Begina is her uncle. After she and her sister were found in a refugee camp, he adopted them and raised them as his own. To me, you know, he's the person uh, that's the reason why I'm still alive today, you know, and he's a providing me the education and the love, the support that my parents couldn't because they were killed in the genocide. And so this is very personal to me because I'm afraid that um, he was, he's going to be taken again, taken away. She said she, too, felt threatened. While her father's trial was underway, Amnesty International revealed through a forensic analysis that Kanimba's sister, Corrine, was likely the victim of a near-constant surveillance campaign. From January through June this year, her phone had been hacked, 
Amnesty's data strongly suggested the Rwandan government was behind it, and they were using her phone as a device to listen in on her private meetings with lawyers and government officials. They're trying to infiltrate and get to you as much as much as they can, all the way to everything that you have on your phone. And it's very scary. Why are, why are they doing that if it's not just to repress people, to repress our family, to repress my father, and to repress any other person who dare to speak against them? The nonprofit American group Freedom House, which does research on democracy and political rights around the world, says Rusesa Begina's rendition and the Rwandan government's alleged hacking of his daughter's phone are part of a larger trend of what's known as transnational repression. And it's happening to dissidents around the world. Michael Abramowitz is the president of Freedom House. Transnational repression is essentially the effort by coercion or intimidation or in some cases violence to silence the voices of critics of authoritarian regimes who have fled authoritarian regimes to the United States or other countries. Once an exceptional tool, it's now a normal and institutionalized practice for dozens of countries that seek to control their people abroad, according to Freedom House. The organization documented hundreds of cases, from Russian President Vladimir Putin allegedly assassinating dissident Alexander Litvinenko in the United Kingdom by using radioactive poison, to Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman allegedly approving the Istanbul murder of Saudi journalist and critic Jamal Khashoggi. And most recently, Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko using a bomb threat to force down a Ryanair flight carrying an opposition journalist. No one is safe anymore from the long arm of the authoritarian state. So even American citizens, if we don't stand up to transnational repression, I think that we are opening the door to authoritarian countries going after everyone living in a democracy. So I don't, I don't think this is just a matter of us and them. It's a matter of all of us. On September 20th of this year, Paul Grisazapikina was found guilty. He founded a terrorist group that attacked Rwanda. He financially contributed to the terrorist activities. He approved monthly payments for these activities. He invented a code to hide these activities. Human rights observers say the trial was flawed and unfair, with numerous violations of due process. Sarah Jackson is a deputy regional director for East Africa with Amnesty International. If the Rwandan authorities had wanted to investigate and prosecute Paul Rosessa Bagina, um, if they had a basis for this, they could have lodged an extradition request. But instead, he was subject to rendition and taken back to, to Rwanda. His lawyers say it was a setup, and his rendition to Rwanda amounted to an illegal kidnapping. If they had presented a formal request for extradition, it would have never withheld the test of a judge. This is why they decided to kidnap it, because they knew following due process would have not worked out and would have not uh, allowed them to get him. Th this has been going on for, for the last 27 years, that they've been uh, tracking hunting, kidnapping, you know, killing opponents and, and regardless of where they are, in Rwanda or abroad, uh, the list of people who have been you know, killed or kidnapped is a very long one. President Kagame rejected accusations that Rusesa Begina was targeted because of his outspoken views, saying in this televised interview days before the 2021 verdict that he was on trial only for the alleged attacks in 2018. Now he's here being tried for that. Nothing to do with the film. Nothing to do with the... the there's not even an argument. Nobody's arguing about his celebrity status. However, he got that. That's their whoever gave it to him or even for himself. It's their business. Paul Rasisabegina's family is now suing the private airline that flew him to Rwanda. Now, the only contact Anais Kanimba has with her father is a five-minute weekly audio call from his Kigali prison, which she records and listens back to. I, I love hearing this. I love re listening to his voice uh, um, and uh, just, just the moment that we have with him and how fast it is. It's really easy to feel that there is no hope. Even us, sometimes we, we have those, those scary thoughts, but we, we just don't allow ourselves to think about that. Why would Kagame let him go? I, I ask myself that question, but then I, I go to sleep and by telling myself, no, 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 he's going to come back. I just, maybe, there's, no, there's no reason, rationale to how he will, but he will come back. 
Meanwhile, the Rwandan government is working in the courts to have Rissa Begina's sentence change from 25 years in prison to life.